Well, hello and welcome, everybody. It's your host, Ken D. Foster. Hey, today's a great day, isn't it? We've got a lot going on in the country. We've got a lot going on in a lot of families and communities right now. And I have an amazing show for you today. In fact, this could be a show that really helps you to switch around your thinking in ways that will really empower you or some family members to really take their lives to a completely new level. I have a question for you. Is there anyone out there who has not made a mistake? If so, you know, give us a shout out on Facebook or Twitter or somebody, uh, some of our social media. I, I doubt if there's anybody that's never made a mistake. And, you know, is there anybody out there that wishes that they could do something over again? Like you've made a mistake and you want to do it over again. Well, I would say that all of us have done that, right? We made mistakes. We may got angry when we didn't want to be angry or upset or we said words. Maybe we've got regrets. Uh, you know, a lot of things happen in this world. And, um, you know, it's, it's not what happens to us because I believe everything is happening for us, but it's how we react to that and how we grow through it and how we tune into our own power and passion and love to overcome all of these things, right? Well, listen, I'm calling the show today, The Courage to Overcome Addictions, right? Because what stops us from passion and power and love and being all we can be? Well, it's it usually is the addictions. So I'm going to take a little deeper dive into that. But right now, before I do, what I want to do is I want to give a shout out to uh, one of my new sponsors. Uh, they're called JBK Wellness. And if you have a dream to create a wellness product, if you'd like to take your product to market, then JBK Wellness Labs can help you. They are a respected contract and white label manufacturer who helps companies develop and manufacture dietary supplements, topical personal care products, beauty products, and hemp-based CBD products. JBK wellness products can be found in high-end resorts, including Rich Carlton, Four Seasons, and national grocery chain stores such as Whole Foods. Listen, I know these people. They're going to walk you through the challenging times that it takes to develop a product from concept through the finished product. So if you'd like to get your product to market, give them a call and connect with them at jbkwellnesslabs.com. That's jbkwellnesslabs.com. All right. Well, listen, as a nation today, we are drinking too much, we're drugging too much, we're shopping too much, we're Facebooking too much, we're Instagramming, Twittering a little too much, and we're overeating ourselves uh, into oblivion. And I'm not telling you this to upset you. I'm not telling you this so that you throw away your cell phones or you stop shopping or you stop doing some of the things you love. But I have a question for you um, when you're in one of these addictions, uh, and that is this. Do you believe that when you're over shopping, you're overeating, you're overdoing whatever, do you think that's really empowering you or disempowering you? Do you believe that's bringing you closer to your life purpose or further away from your life purpose? And for some of you that are listening to the show today, you're going, life purpose, what the heck is that? Do I even have one? Well, stay tuned. My guest, Lorraine Purcell, is going to address that in a little bit. We're going to be talk, taking a little deep dive into purpose and understanding and, and finding out what that is at the core essence of you that's maybe stopping you from stepping into who you are. Listen, I've found that people that are honest with themselves and vulnerable uh, and step into their courage, these are the ones that can make the changes that they need to make to have health, have vitality, have a great environment, have great relationships, have just about everything they want, right? So today I want to talk to you about some of the steps it may take for you to do that. 
And um, one of those steps, of course, is for you to get clear with who you are, right? All right, you're saying, Ken, I already know who I am. I get it. I know you know who you are. You know, I know you know that you have a house, that you have a great job, that you are, uh, uh, you know, a, a great partner. You you do a lot of things, but who are you at your core? That's really what I'm talking about here. Who is it that the you behind the things you do? That little observer of everything that goes on in your life. Who is that? Because that's the that's the essence of you that we have to tune into if you're going to really take your life to a completely new level. So I was listening to a podcast yesterday, and they were quoting an article from the Center for Disease Control, CDC. They put this out, I guess, in 2019 or so. And basically what it said was this, we're becoming a nation of addiction, of addicts. And there's a large group of individuals that don't want to be present to their circumstances. The theory is that they just want to run away from what's going on from reality, right? Um, without the ability to confront real life situations and meet challenges, What's happening for these people is they're really disempowered, right? And, you know, it sounded pretty accurate to me what's going on in our nation, especially with the shutdowns and especially with some of us, uh, uh, the social isolation that's taking place. A lot of people I'm finding out are turning to uh, over drinking, over eating. Uh, some of them are a lot of uh, medication that's going on. So we're hearing those reports come out time and time again right now. So if that's you, then, you know, pay attention because you don't have to keep doing that. There is a way out. And um, let me see what else I want to tell you about that article. Um, you know, let, let me say one other thing. There are a lot of people trying to change the world today, right? We got them, you know, marching in the streets. Uh, you got governors trying to make a difference and change the world. But there's a challenge with that. And here's the challenge. It's like putting the cart before the horse. See, if you don't change yourself first and you're out change, trying to change the world, then what do we get? We kind of get the same old, same old, right? Because what happens when you change yourself, you end up with wisdom, wisdom. You know, have you ever asked yourself why there seems to be so much lack of wisdom in the world, whether it be from our politicians, our judges, our school teachers, um, just think about it. Maybe family members. Why is there lack of wisdom? Well, I can tell you why there's lack of wisdom because they haven't done the inner work it takes to decide and decipher who they are. First of all, what their life purpose is, what's working in their life, what's not working in their life. And what is it that they really want to do? So many people today feel like they're victims of the, of the, political system or they're victims of the system or they're victims of the institution. But listen, we have gone down a path of what I want to say, empowering institutions. And I do, I'm a very firm believer we need to empower individuals. But listen, that's not going to happen unless we do the inner work ourselves. You know, if you do the inner work and you start to shine and put your voice out in the world, like my guest Lorraine Purcell is going to come on in just a second has done, okay? Then what's going to happen is you're going to change the lives of maybe one other person. Wouldn't that be cool? Maybe 10 other people, maybe a thousand other people, maybe tens of thousands or millions or billions of people. They're waiting for you. But if you're not willing to do the work, if you're not willing to change yourself, then nothing's going to change. Why? Because the mind is the cause of our bondage and the mind is the cause of our liberation. And if you don't change your thinking, you can't change the outer experience. You've got to step into new beliefs, new way, new philosophies, new strategies. And if you can do that, you can actually change the way that uh, life shows up for you. So listen, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, a new book I
the stream here. Here. So we are here. All righty. So she is an international best-selling author, marriage and family child therapist. Lorraine Purcell is a global thought leader on self-love and trading anxiety, guilt, and shame for ease and peace. Who wouldn't want that? In 2013, she healed herself from a lifelong debilitating depression and 18 years on the prescription drug Zoloft. She Today, she passionately teaches learners and leaders to tune into their souls and become the best version of themselves. Lorraine, it is great to have you here. And I just can't believe that we're together. This is so awesome. Well, it is awesome because uh, it's been a long ride. You and I have known each other for a while. And, um, you know, at one point I was uh, your coach and helping you. And, um, you know, I, I feel proud. I, I When I see you, I see, man, she rocked it. She took her life to a completely new level. So that's, that's really you got books out and you've got your training with some of the top leaders in the world. Uh, John Gray, Dr. John Gray, Dr. John Martini. Uh, Dr. Robert Pease. Um, wow, those are really powerful leaders. How, what happened? What what was the what was the change, Lorraine? Let's just start there. Um, we, you know what what happened here? <laughs> Let me tell you what happened. I met with you and your wife Judy in a parking lot in Kona, Hawaii, when I was living there, and you told me that thoughts are not my thoughts. And then you could actually see them zinging through the air and they're just looking for a vibrational match. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what are you saying? I love that. <laughs> you said, I said, I have, I've had, I, I cannot get off Zoloft. Every time I try, I want to leave the planet even more. I've been on it for 18 years. Nobody said to me, no doctor has said to me, let, you know, let me help you get off this thing. And um, you said, I'll help you. Judy and I will help you, which entailed you being available via phone 24-7 if I needed you. And it's funny, just knowing that you were there and you telling me that it was going to be okay, just, you know, follow your instructions. Um, I don't know if we want to share those right here. Um and I did not need you. It took me nine months to finish my last. It's been, um, gosh, I, I was just calculating. It's been exactly seven years. Wow. And I have not had depression. And I have been off Zoloft. And um, taking like. Well, you, well you, know, you know, a lot of people get on drugs like that. And, you know, they, they, uh, they're great uh, for a temporary little fix, right? I mean, if you have to go on for a couple months because your mind is really messed up and it's going to help you. But what happens is I don't think there's a lot of education around how addictive these, these substances are, nor how to even get off them once you get on them. And I'm not sure, you know, a lot of doctors are out there talking about, hey, I want you to get off it now. I hope right. they are, but I don't. I don't know. I, I, you know, it just seems like there's so many people addicted to these kind of drugs that I really question that. I know the doctors have really good intentions; they're there to help and help right. people. I know that, but you know, you get addicted, and then it's tough, tough to get off. They would say to me, "You know, this was supposed to be temporary," and I'd say, "Yeah, I know, but I can't get off," and they wouldn't offer me a solution, so I just kept taking it because I couldn't get off, and then I felt. Like there was something wrong with me because I couldn't stop Zoloft. Right. How did you, okay, so how did you break the Zoloft habit? How, let's just go there, but then I want to take a, a lifelong dive into what broke you out of the lifelong depression totally. So let's talk about Zoloft real quick. How did you do that? And then let's talk about the depression because I want to know that. My listeners want to know that. Well, I did what you told me to do. And for those of you listening I don't recommend that you do this without um, consulting your doctor. Please, please, please promise me, promise me, promise me that you will not do this without medical supervision. But I felt comfortable enough with Ken. And what he said was every month, you're going to cut an eighth of a tab off and save all your crumbs and live with that dosage for a month. And it was like, no problem. You know, with seven eighths of a tab my first month, I was taking 100 milligrams a day. Uh, I I noticed no difference, and then the next month would run up would come along, and I would cut two eighths off. 
and I would live with that dose. I think that makes six eighths. So I just did that all the way down until June 30th, my birthday in 2013. I met you and Judy in that parking lot. I knew you before, but I met you um, September 2012. Probably That's great. And, and just just to clarify this, you still had the doctor in your life. He was still prescribing this to you. Yeah. And so yeah. you had counseling, you know, not just my my instruction. But you know, what you did was take back your life. You just said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it down. What I suggested is, hey, why don't you just cut down a little bit? Now your doctor could have said the same thing, you know, and um, you know, I I don't know why he didn't, but you know, it no. it, it needed to happen. <laughs> Yeah. So that's what I did. And yeah, I never noticed right. anything. Right. Yeah. Because I, you know, I'm not a doctor <laughs> and I'm not there to prescribe some, but I am there to look at what's working, what's not with people and clients. And I just say, listen, would it, you know, would it be worth your while to maybe start cutting down? And you're like, oh gosh, maybe I could do that. <laughs> so that's great. All right. So how did you get off the lifelong depression? That piece, because so many people, I, I know there is underlying depression. And well, let's talk about the symptoms of your depression, the symptoms of depression that people might have out there right now. Because it's depression doesn't always show up where you just can't go out of the house, you're depressed. There's a lot of subtle signs before it gets to that point. Well, for me, I um I was to the point where when I was living in Hawaii, I there were days I couldn't get out of bed. So I was probably pretty advanced, but um, I, in my work, work with this community called Earth Angels, where we are the sensitive ones, the ones that love very much, and we care a lot, and we we give too much. We tend to be a little codependent. And um, so we take everything so deeply and so personally that we take everybody's blame that wants to shovel it out on us. And we always think we're wrong. And oftentimes this was set up in childhood. So it's just when you know when you think there's something wrong with you innately and people are telling you that you're too sensitive, you're going to get depressed because you can't express. You cannot express. You're highly self-conscious. You are very um, uh, nervous, shy, and so um, you don't express. And when you don't express your emotions and your feelings you get depressed. Expression is the opposite of depression was a word that came to me from spirit just while I was in the process of coming off of Zoloft. No, no, it was after I came off of Zoloft. Expression is the opposite of depression. So if you find yourself being nervous about really expressing your exuberance or laughing loud because somebody told you that, you know, you're, you're too loud, why don't you quiet down? Um, that is a big thing for me, my depression, ever since I was young, physical pain across the, the, my chest, it hurt my heart, my chest actually hurt. The pain of depression was so strong that it actually hurt. Yeah. And you know, Lorraine, I, I know there are people out there that are, that are feeling that, that, that too. And, you know, it's, um, it's interesting because I, I, I've, I've dealt with a lot of individuals like this over the years, like you, like me. And, uh, you know, we are empaths. We're empathic. We feel we're very in tune. We're very feeling people. Actually, they're very advanced souls, most people that have this. And they have uh, the ability to feel other people's thoughts, other people's feelings, of their own feelings, the, the feelings of the earth and the magnetic force. And what's happening is that nobody's ever taught them you're empathic, right? Nobody's ever taught them that they, they can tune in. It's okay to feel this, but let it pass through, right? And so, I, I, yeah, go, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I think it's annoying to family because you see everything that's going on. And for me, I was the one that cried for my family because they wouldn't express their sadness or emotions. So I cried a lot because I was the one who was emoting and then I would get in trouble for crying. Yeah, you, you carry the pain of the family. Yes, yes. And I think a lot of the earth angel population that I'm talking about, we do. We do because we, we, we just, and then as we increase in our age, 
um, leave our home maybe, you can be walking in a grocery store and all of a sudden you'll just feel someone's pain. And I wanna sometimes just drop to my knees and start sobbing, you know? Um, so when you can learn to get your sea legs with this and understand that and know that you are not wrong, it is a highly wonderful gift that God has given you. And so the people who said that you were too sensitive, you know, uh, why don't you toughen up? Um, these are well-meaning parents who really want you to survive in the world because the way you're showing up, crying as a child all the time, they're worried about you. You know, are you going to be able to function in life? <laughs> so well, they, they, they are, are. And, and they don't know what to do with it because it feels like uh, there's they, in their minds because they don't they don't have that kind of. Um, uh, ability to feel and to some, a lot of us are psychic. I mean, a lot of us are, are extremely intuitive We and we're prophetic. We can see things coming in the future. And, you know, when you're a child and, and a parent doesn't understand that because they just don't have that, con that consciousness that you do, it can be very disheartening, you know? And so I think you're really addressing an issue that a lot of people have that's really isn't talked about much. Okay. It just really isn't. Oh, you know, when's the last time you said, heard everybody say, "Well, you're an empath, okay? Well, you're an intuitive. You, you, you need to understand how to use those qualities and gifts to bring love in the world, to bring whatever your gift is in the world." And then there's the, the thing: who do you talk to about this? There aren't a whole lot of us. <laughs> you know, right. most of the population is you know doing the thing in the streets, um, anger, acting out. You know, we don't tend to do that. And we're very, like you were saying in the beginning, I just almost, I could feel a lump in my throat several times while you were talking in the beginning, Ken, about, you know, going within, doing that inner work. We are so introspective and it's actually our gift. And there comes a point when you've done so much work on yourself that you're done, not done, done, but you're done, like, like magnifying yourself, snooping on yourself, like, okay, I'm on my feet now. And that's where I am now, but it's taken I have been working on it for 35 years yeah. and um, well, that, well, that, that's really good. Is there any shortcuts? Well, you know what? I want to ask you that. There's some shortcuts here that people can take. So maybe it doesn't take 35 years to feel really empowered, right? Let, let's talk about that because you learned a bunch along the way. So listen, I got to take a really quick break. And then when we get back, we will, uh, we will, uh, Well, hello. I want to talk to you again about one of my sponsors today. And um, this is a sponsor that is new for me. And I, I just, I'm going to just tell you results. Okay. There's an organization called Living Design Technology, and their motto is harmonizing nature and technology. If you're an individual like me and my wife who are very sensitive to energy, uh, we've had to rectify 2G, 3G, 4G, and now 5G. And for us, we moved into a neighborhood that's about a half a mile away from the main uh, tower that's broadcasting not only radio, but microwave and uh, 5G off of this tower about a half mile from our house. So we got here. Things uh, felt a little un uneasy for us, to say the least. So we rectified some of the situation, and it was still there. But I have to say that I worked with the owner of this company. Her name is Tika Vales Caldwell. And this technology, uh, they based on uh, technology from Tesla, um, where we're grounding um, into the earth. Uh, I won't go into the details of it, but they they uh, we put a whole house system in here, and I want to tell you the results. The results are more energy for all of us in the household. Um, uh, one of my household members was just struggling with losing weight and couldn't figure it out and was angry all the time, completely harmonized in the last six weeks. We've had uh, one uh, young member that uh, all of a sudden has a lot more energy and, and commitment to, uh, to his studies. And we have my wife who is just um, completely in harmony and not feeling any negative energies anymore. So it's amazing. All right, I know it's, it's kind of out there. How does this work? I don't know, but I will say this. It doesn't block EMF waves. It harmonizes 
nature with technology. So you may want to check them out. I hope you do. All righty. So back to my show today, and I want to bring my guest back in. She's so amazing. All right. So Lorraine Purcell, uh, she's a marriage and family child counselor, and she is also an author. She is a best-selling author, by the way. And we're talking here about uh, the path out of depression, out of uh, well, we first talked about the addiction of Zoloft, but now we're talking about out, out, getting out of depression. Some of the shortcuts that one might be able to take. Is there a shortcut out of depression? I don't know. Yeah. You while me. you're while you were on the break, I uh, I wrote some down real quick. <laughs> so um, first of all, I would say coaching someone, but not necessarily counseling. Now, I, I'm sorry to say that um, all of you counsels out there, uh, nothing against you. Counseling just takes too long. Um, and it's going back into the past all the time. And you might want to do that a little bit. And here I am a counselor. But um, it just takes too long. And that's why I really like the coaching model, because it's just pew, right in there. So somebody that you trust and feel comfortable with. Second thing is to um, watch. YouTube videos on the quantum field of all possibilities. Joe Dispenza, Bruce Lipton, Greg Braden um, are, are my favorites. And I have completely um, educated myself on the quantum field of all possibilities. Um, the third thing is, yeah, this is washing your brain. People might say, okay, you're, you're brainwashing yourself by uh, not listening to the news, not plugging into the media, staying away from things to that that make you feel bad, which I go into detail into my free ebook at, at three keys to selflove.com. But washing your brain is huge. My brain needs washing. I don't know about your brain, but my brain really needs washing because I uh, had low self-esteem. I didn't feel good about myself. I didn't think I was worthy. I didn't ever, I never thought that I was enough. And so I've washed my brain in these 35 years. So you could, I'm going to give you the shortcuts. These are them. Changing your thoughts, like Ken said, changing your thoughts. And especially, this is the big one. This is the big one. This is the big one. You are meant to feel good and happy. It, that's it. Anything that doesn't make you feel good or happy, get away from it. Turn off the television, walk away. I haven't watched the television in 35 years. I do not miss it at all. Unfortunately, unfortunately, some people like when, you know, you feel good and happy, they feel good and happy watching TV or they feel good and happy maybe going out and partying with their friends, right? So I think I think we got to kind of clarify that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, um, it's, not, it's not feeling good loaded. It's feeling good in your skin. But if you are like, if some, if you're in a conversation with somebody and they're, they're complaining, like I, I do this, it's like downward spiral or the upward spiral and keeping our energy high and clear, do everything in your power to keep your energy high and clear. You can't have your energy high and clear if you're under the influence of something. So, um, you know, if somebody I've had to do this with friends before, you know, I, I cannot hear your complaining anymore. It, it physically makes me ill. I cannot talk to you unless we, every time you say one thing that's negative, you say five things that are positive. And um, so it's really taking control of your environment. Go ahead, Ken. Yeah, I was going to say this because, um, you know, I think society as a whole is so, um, you know, it, it's like we're, we kind of are tuned out, right? We're not really tuned yeah. into ourselves because, you know, it, you turn on mainstream media and it's really showing you the dramatic, right. uh, most the worst stuff you can see out there. Okay. They, they love the story. They like the dramatic. And yeah. I think people are addicted to that stuff. Yes. And, and you, uh, you know, you, you, you ask somebody, Hey, please, uh, let's not talk about violence. And I, I don't want to talk about the murders that happened today. And they actually can get upset with you. I bet that's happened to you. Hey, Hey, uh, what, what do you mean? Don't, don't tell, don't tell me what I want to say. I'm going to, I'm going to talk whatever I want. How do you handle that as an empath? I think that's a good point. Um, it used to bother me that someone would say to me, what's wrong with you? You're hiding your head in the sand. This was something that my family would say a lot. So 
Um, you know, you're hiding your head in your sand. You're not facing reality. You got to face reality. You're an idealist. You got to stop being an idealist. God, you're did you have the same? Did you wait a second? Did you have the same family that uh, the same parents that I did? What what uh, what really the hell? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, and so so we're we're drilled that oh my God, we're wrong that we want to be around positive energy. But as soon as I got over that, someone's saying, "Hey, did you hear about this?" And you go, "No." Tell me what happened. So what I've learned, and this is super important. So once I got over that accusation, what's wrong with you? You got your head in the sand. You need to blah, blah, blah. Once I got over feeling negative that they would say that and feeling afraid that they would say that, they stopped saying it. When I took control and I knew I knew that to be a counselor and to have my energy up with my clients I could not pay attention to any news because it completely wiped me out. I could not pay attention to it at all. But what I found out, and this is so great, this happened to me on 9-11. I was on a boat with my sister at the time and um, I got off the boat and someone said, hey, did you hear what happened? And I'm like, no. They said, wow, the Twin Towers, blah. And so I have found that every time I need to know something, spirit will bring it to me. I don't have to worry about taking a bath in what the world is doing. And, you know, it's really suspect if it's even real or not, or That's if it's right. one little corner that has been exaggerated. So frankly, that irritates me very much to be manipulated. And I feel manipulated by mass mass uh, media. So I That's have right. well, listen, Lorraine, I got to got to get uh, my sponsor a little message here. But uh, when we come back. I'd like to take a little deeper dive in what do you believe are the three keys that create depression in people? Let's talk about that. Well, listen, I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about JBK Wellness Labs. Uh, and the reason I want to do that is because this company can really help you bring your product to market. They are a white label and contract manufacturers who helps you develop and manufacture your dietary supplement products, topical personal care products, beauty products, and hemp-based CBD products. They will help you from start to completion. They're found on the shelves of Neiman Marcus, Whole Foods, Urban Outfitters, CVS, Kroger, Ritz Carlton Hotels, Four Season Hotels. You get it. This is a real manufacturer that can really help you to get your product in market. So don't sit on the sidelines. Uh, contact JBK Wellness Labs and help them and let them to uh, you know let them work with you to be able to help you take your business to the next level. I hope you'll check them out. All right. Hey, so I want to also mention uh, just uh, another organization that just hooked up with me. This is the coolest product ever. I'm going to show it to you. It's called Curalin. I hope you can see it. Um, I'll, I'll try to have a graphic for you next week. Curalin is a um, product that is, um, uh, it works this way. They combine Ayurvedic, a a a Ayurvedic, Ayurvedic practices with modern science and some technology into a spectacular synergistic glucose support formula. Now, who would need this? Well, if you're an individual that has low blood sugars or fluctuations in blood sugars, that's the kind of person that might want to have this, right? Because this supports healthy blood sugar levels. The product is called Cure Alin, and it's 100% natural. It's a, glu it's a glucose support uh, supplement for the people, again, looking to maintain healthy blood sugar levels without negative effects. If you'd like to learn more about Curalin, go to curealife.com. That's C-U-R-A-L-I-F-E.com. And if you decide that this is something for you, when you go to the shopping cart, put in the word courage, right? Put in the code courage and you'll get 20% off, excuse me, $20 off your first order. And you'll also get 15% for the next year off of your order. So I hope you'll check them out.
Well, welcome back. I'm here with Lorraine Purcell. She's an international best-selling author. We're talking about a deep dive into what her depression looked like. And, and the reason we're doing that is because I believe you can learn from other people's experiences. In fact, that's one of the way to gain wisdom, right? Isn't it? So if you can get a couple pieces for yourself today, if you uh, are going through a, uh, a place of addiction because you, you're, you're self-medicating, maybe even uh, the, the depression, um, and you wanna break free of that, uh, this is the show to listen to, okay? This is it. So Lorraine, um, let's just define, um, you know, what what is depression? Let's, let's just define it. What does that even mean? Some people think it's this person crawled up in a, in a corner all balled up and they're crying, but depression's a lot more than that. Well, a lot of people say that it's a chemical imbalance and I, I believe that, but I believe that you can change the chemistry in your brain by how you choose to believe and think. Because when you are thinking that there's something wrong with you, that you're there's something fundamentally flawed with you, that makes you feel bad. And when you feel bad, um, Deepak Chopra says that the immune system is eavesdropping on our emotions and our thoughts all the time. And so when you are uh, thinking that there's something wrong with you, that you're fundamentally flawed, that you're just there, you there's just something wrong, which is a lot of times the it. message that we get. Yeah. And when you yeah. feel depressed, you really feel that way. And then it goes in that downward spiral. And so um, when we can start feeling good and we can start being happy for no reason, when we can start um you know, meditating and feeling bliss, then our 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 body starts to create, you know, the synthetic endorphin, whatever the endorphins, yeah. the, the uh, oxytocin, the the chemicals that start to make us feel better. I have a question for you. Do you think uh, your your depression was a habit? Did you get in the habit of being depressed? Is that is that the case or I not? Got, I got in the habit of thinking there was something wrong with me. I got in the habit of thinking that uh, I didn't belong on the planet. I got in the habit of uh, thinking nobody understood me. I got in the habit of, uh, I, I'm sure I was addicted to this chemical cocktail going on in my brain. And, you know, just recently I found out that I'm addicted to guilt. Like guilt feels familiar and I will, uh, something really wonderful has just happened in my life and something big just went. <sighs> and so I'm like, guilting myself and going, is there anything I, did I do something wrong? And so um, I'm understanding this is my familiar emotion. This is what I go to when things are good. And that's an, interesting, that's an interesting game. emotion because, uh, you know, clients uh, that I work with sometimes feel, they feel guilty for doing something and then they feel guilty for not doing it. And it can be the same exact thing. They might feel guilty if they go help somebody and then they feel guilty if they say, no, I don't want to help you. Right. So now they're, now they're stuck in a loop. Right. And now and now if you're just feeling this guilt and guilt feels uh, it doesn't feel I, I, it. It lands in me in my solar plex. I don't know where it lands in you, but we it might, it might land yeah, in your chest, your heart. Right. It might land in your throat because you can't speak, but it'll land somewhere in your body. And when you notice that you're like, oh, OK, is this a, is this a pattern that I have going on in my body? And if so, could you let it go? Right. Could you let it go? Could you? Could you take that next step, you know, to to uh, to allowing it to move out of your body? And of course, we, we're not going to give solutions too much on this today, um, but there's a lot of solutions for this. There is uh, there is Sedona work. There is EFT. There's meditation. There is introspection. There is therapies where you talk to there's talk therapies. There's, there must be a thousand different ways to to move this out of your body. And the reason I'm saying that is because a lot of times I think we get stuck in these patterns and we think that this is the way life is. This is just the way I am, right, Lorraine? Yeah. yeah. There's something stuck wrong here. with me. This is just the way I am, right? I'm stuck here. That's why I wanted to die yeah. my entire life. Yeah. Because I yeah. felt like I there was just something wrong with me and I didn't fit in. And no matter what I did, it just never measured up. And so you asked before we took the break, what are the three keys to depression? And let me just share what I wrote down. Thinking that you have to be around negative energy. 
that's guilt and obligation. People are guilting you and you're feeling manipulated that you have to stay when something isn't feeling good. Okay. So feeling like thinking that you have to be around negative people and negative energy, like they could be your family. It could be your husband. It could be your children. You just politely excuse yourself and walk away or, you know, find a new partner. Um, <laughs> not tuning. The second one, not tuning into your feelings and being cut off from yourself. When I first started my journey, this was all I was aware of was from my chin up. Okay, so I was not aware of my body at all. So when you're not aware of your feelings, you can't tune into your feelings. And the third one is not loving yourself enough to walk away from the situation that's not feeling comfortable or someone who's not supportive of you or somebody who um, is criticizing you and putting you down and sarcastic and complaining about their day at work. And, you know, so loving yourself and not loving yourself to walk enough to walk away. It's the opposite of my three keys to self-love. Um, <laughs> the last one is loving yourself to walk away. That's really That's good. good. Okay. Listen, I'm going to uh, take a quick break. We come back. I want to uh, ask you one. Uh, I want to ask you the, um, the strongest concepts that we can give our audience to pull themselves out of depression. And I want to take a deeper dive in your book real quick too, because I think uh, people really want to get that book and be able to understand the journey out of depression, the journey of feeling powerful, of feeling connected. So be right back. All righty. Well, Via Kalima, they are a women's addiction treatment and holistic recovery center. They are located in Carl's, uh, in uh, San Diego County, in, in uh, San Diego, California. And if you are a woman and you are ready to release the anxiety, the addictions, and other issues that may be dra dragging you down, you know, if you believe it's a time to heal and reemerge as the real you, then Via Cali Ma, they're in La Costa, California, offers that renewal. They are a holistic residential recovery program exclusively for women for individualized treatments. And they offer proven clinical and holistic therapies for the mind, body, and spirit to assure sustainable recovery. So if you'd like to find out about them, and I really encourage you to do it. I know the owner of this organization. She's a phenomenal woman. I know the director of uh, recovery there. She's amazing. They bring in the top quality people from around the nation to support your recovery. So you can start your healing today at Villa Cali Mon, La Costa, California. You just give them a call, 760-814-814. 8214 again 7608148214 All right well we're back and I'm talking with Lorraine Purcell she is an international best selling author and uh, just okay a couple strategies to get people out of uh, depression really quickly what would those be Um sorry, to get people out of depression. It's, it's a long journey. I'm not going to kid you because you are wired to think that you're bad and wrong. You are wired that way. You have had that drilled into you since you're little. So it would be to maybe, um, you know, hook on to a couple of mentors, either via YouTube or Louise Hay, something like that, where they're just telling you how worthy you are, how worthy you are, how worthy you are, how good and beautiful and wonderful you are, how you're God's child, and just start washing your brain and rewiring yourself. This is not going to be quick. <laughs> Sorry, Ken. There's there's just no quick way out of yeah. it. Yeah. Well, they're they're not. And uh, but I do want to give uh, one one resource for people because this is a free resource for me. It's called uh, the Energetic Clearing Technique. Um, this is uh, to help you clear your past and recreate your destiny. It is free on my website at uh, kendfoster.com forward slash resources, kendfoster.com forward slash resources. And that's for you for free. And that'll help you to clear some of those old beliefs out. 
you're right. It takes a while. It's like peeling the onion, baby. <laughs> it is. It is. But my my free resource would be my ebook, Three Keys to Selflove.com. And that will get us into this journey because I'm very much into self-love because I was like the queen of self-loathing. I was the queen yeah. of self-loathing. And um, <laughs> that's funny. I like, oh, I love that picture. <laughs> I remember Isn't when that we picture that awesome, man. Yeah, the three keys uh, in 13 tools to self-love. Now tell us where they get that book now. Where did they get that? Yeah, you go to www.3keys2selflove.com. The number three keys like you put in your car to selflove.com and put in your name and email and that will get us more closely connected. I have uh, three times a week free live streams where we just go into a lot of this. We just raise our energy. We keep our energy high and clear, this whole community around the world. And so there's so much support for you once you connect in through that that ebook. But those three keys are so important. I think those three keys are the most important to start to realize it's like a fish getting their water contaminated. They don't notice a little at a time. So you're in a, probably an environment that's not supportive to you. So it's um, these three keys will wake you up. You do these. Well, three I, I really like what you said. I like what you said because you know it. It, it takes a community uh, to really help uh, break the the mental patterns that are stopping you from feeling all that you want to feel and being the person that you want to be. Um, you know, Lorraine, you've you've uh, you've done so much work on yourself and you've got a lot of wisdom now. Um, you kind of have the microphone today. So, um, you know, we got a lot going on in this world, right? You know, we got, we got shutdowns. We got people that are sick, uh, you know, and dying. And my heart goes out to every single one that has lost their lives. My heart also goes out to everybody on the front lines, the firefighters, the policemen, the, the nurses, the doctors that are really stepping up and, you know, and, and putting themselves at risk so that uh, others can be safe. So, What's your message today, Lorraine? What is your message to the world today uh, with what we're going through? What, what would you say? I would say that you need to stop reacting and you need to ground into yourself and even into Mother Earth, if you, if you like. But start doing a meditation practice or a stillness practice, even if it means you sitting on a couch and breathing five times or standing at your kitchen sink and breathing five times, you need to get into a place of alignment and peace. Because as long as you're reacting in fear, there's nothing good that's going to come out of that. Absolutely nothing that's going to come out of that that's good. And you're feeding the machine of the planet of everybody freaking out. So when you start to breathe, might sound really simple, but when you start to breathe and notice your breath coming into your lungs, you are breaking out of a trance. The world is in a hypnotic trance of fear and suffering right now. So we need to take control and we need to connect to our breath, stop wherever you are, take five deep cleansing breaths, and maybe sit yourself on the, on the couch and close your eyes and take your life back so that you're not just a puppet being thrown around. I mean, it, it's a design to be thrown around. It's a design. It is designed for you to get into your panic, fight, and flight thing. The world, the powers that be want you this way. Do you want them to win? No. So the way to do it is to take control of yourself, take control of your peace and your calm, and get your right mind. Get your right mind back. Or it may be the first time you've noticed it in your whole life so that you're not jumping out of fear all the time, but that you come now, you can come from a place of love, come from a place of love with an open heart. And this is what we do on my three weekly, three times a week live streams. We do this. We align our energy and then we send that out to the planet, the peace, the love, the bliss, because we're all one, we're all connected. So when I get myself into a place of peace instead of fear and anxiety, I am actually feeding that out into the planet. We are not isolated beings, we are connected to the whole. So when 
We take care of our energy and we keep our energy high and clear and make that top priority. Everybody else starts to calm. You are just allowing their people to take that highway that you have just pioneered. Man, I couldn't have said it better than that. That's really good, Lorraine. So, okay, if you'd like to uh, pick up Lorraine's uh, three keys and 13 tools to self-love, uh, I hope you'll do that. Lorraine, why don't we give them that one more time so that they have that? It's three keys to selflove.com. Three keys to selflove.com. Okay. Thank you so much. Lorraine, thank you for being here. It was a powerful message for people today. I really appreciate you. I appreciate all you do. I'm so glad we were able to finally get you on the show. It was just awesome. So thank you for being so here. Much, Ken, and thank you for everything you're doing. And thank you for what you did for me 13 years ago. Oh. I could, I can never thank you and Judy enough. Thank you for being in our lives, my friend, and everything you've given back to us. Thank you so much. And for those of you that uh, would like to find out uh, more about uh, how to clear out the uh, negative beliefs, go to kendifoster.com forward slash resources to uh, put your email in there and get my uh, free guide to do that. Also, for those of you that would like to uh, buy the uh, book of mine, uh, the uh, Courage to Change Everything, you can get that at courage to change.us, courage to change.us. You will be glad you did. All right. Well, that's uh, that's about all we have today. I hope you uh, have enjoyed the show and hope you'll keep coming back. And remember this. Strive to see the unseeable, to know the unknowable, and to do the impossible with courage. If you do that, your life will get better.